Hi y'all, I'm Hannah. Hi, I'm Kayla. Hi, I'm Ann. Hi, I'm Marie, and we are coming to you live from Austin, Texas because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Hey everybody, happy Wednesday. Happy almost fall, y'all. <laughs> We're getting ready for a bunch of fall stuff. And the gals have been super, super busy because you all are just ordering mountains of supplies. So we're very excited to see what you're making. And we have a fun show for you here today. So we're just going to jump right in and get started. Thanks for being here. Hey everybody, I am Marie. We are Living Felt based in Austin, Texas, and this is what we like to do on Wednesdays is hang out with our friends live for about an hour. It is an interactive hour, so the first thing you might see is some of our friends checking in and saying hi and where they're from. So I will hope you'll do that also. If you're watching the playback live on YouTube, uh, not live, but if you're watching the playback on YouTube, hey, hit the subscribe button so you can find out whenever we upload a new video which is almost every week plus some weeks we have felt alongs like this week we're gonna have a felt along on Friday for making a cobweb scarf so I'll talk more about that in a second and thank you all just for being here so let me see who's here and say hi to a few folks we've got Sherry in Louisiana very nice Deborah from North Carolina <laughs> And Pam from a very sunny Nova Scotia. <laughs> <laughs> very nice, very nice. Thanks y'all for being here. I'm trying to refresh my page so that I can see us. Um, oh, Paula, Paula's joining us all the way from Mexico today. That is so sweet. And I know, so I know that the Gulf Coast has been getting a lot, a lot of weather. And so thanks y'all for being here. And I'm glad that that thing was kind of downgraded. Um, so good to know. We're oh, turning down, down, wrong way. <laughs> There we go. Okay, cool. So I see some people checking in. Um, there's Jillian, there's Donna, Becky, Sherry, Elaine. So while people are joining us, hi everybody. Thank you for being here. We have a fun show today. One of the things we're going to do is answer one of the most common questions we get. So I'm going to get to that in just a second. I do have a few shout outs, but before I even get to that, I want you to know we are incredibly excited about all the pieces we're receiving for the Felt United group artwork project. So Felt United happens every year. It's a global art project where people make a work of felt around a unified theme and then we all share it on the Felt United Facebook page. That is run by Nicola Brown in Ireland and my dear friend Don Edwards here in the States. And this year our group, uh, Living Felt Friends here on Facebook, decided to do a project together and everyone has been sending in artwork. The theme this year is texture and we added a couple of parameters for our group artwork and we just have a piles and piles of beautiful, wonderful, special little pieces of artwork stacking up and we're so excited to share those. I think that date's going to be October uh, 3rd. Wednesday, October, the Wednesday, October 3rd and Felt United is the first Saturday in October, which is also the Wolf Festival in Taos every year. I wish I could go. <laughs> but so, Wooly Wednesday, October 3rd, we're going to do the big reveal of all the artwork pieces the best we can. I hope you'll watch that and I know more are still on the way. Um, cool. So more people are joining us. Thank you everybody for being here. Before we go too much further, I want to do two shout outs and shout outs with a great, great big thank you. So the first is to Aaron and Steve Whalen. This hat amazing hat. Now it's not wet felted, it's a true felt hat. Steve Whalen made this and he has been studying hat making more and more this year. He and Aaron started making hats together and they gifted me this gorgeous hat. Anne is going to link to their Facebook page. Aaron is teaching at the Michigan, uh, what was it called? The Michigan um, wool or fiber fest. I'm, I'm missing up the name, but she's going to be teaching needle felting bears and using living felt MC one wool. So I want to say thank you so much to both Aaron and Steve for this wonderful gift. It is so finely felted. 
beautifully blocked and it also includes this gorgeous I'm gonna hold it up for y'all to see um, horsehair hat band I'm gonna try and hold that up because it show on that camera or they're telling me which way okay I'm gonna come to the live camera in just a second am I there we're gonna try it. Can you guys get it to focus? No. I was missing on the on that recorded camera, but there's that hat band. It is absolutely beautiful and such a special gift and such a fancy hat. And I'm just grateful. Thank you very much. And then I have a second shout out, and this one goes out to my friend Rachel Carter, who is on the West Coast, and Rachel sent me this beautiful little wall hanging with such a special card. It has such special meaning, I can't read it to you or I'll just cry. Uh -huh. <laughs> I cried for like an hour when I got it. Such a beautiful tree, and look at those gorgeous colors coming through from behind. And I've asked uh, Anne to share a link to Rachel's Etsy shop, which is called Rock and Flower Felt. And I'm going to hold up her little card. So first to the recorded camera. Does that show here? Closer. And then to the live camera. Where do I go closer? To Rock and Flower Felt. And I just want to say thank you so much, Rachel. This is such a special work of art. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna mount this one on a painted canvas and I'm just trying to pick, or a canvas with cloth, and I'm just trying to pick the right background color. I've experimented uh, with a few different colors and actually gold makes it pop the most, like a gold or a mustard makes it pop the most. And um, so I wanted to have its own little, its own little place. And then I'm deciding whether it goes in my studio or my home. <laughs> is Rachel on here? Or Aaron? No. They'll watch later. That's so cool. So thanks everyone for being here. Our theme, of course, we're like gearing up for fall. We're going to share some fun fall things with you today. And I've asked both Hannah and Ann to help out in that endeavor. And I think Hannah's going to kick it off and show us the autumn leaves, right? So here's that. How Hi everyone. How are y'all doing? So I'm showing y'all uh, one of our specialty designer packs. We have a ton of different varieties, but this one's gonna be our fall, our autumn leaves specialty designer pack. So this is it in the package, how y'all would receive it. And then I do have one opened up. This is gonna be it kind of opened up and spread out for y'all to see. So to start with, we have uh, five merino top colors. We have sunshine, bordeaux, prairie, marigold, and burnt orange. Then we have two of our merino silk blends. We have Loch Ness and sunflower. And it's also gonna come with quite a few of our luster fibers. Um, it could vary in colors a little bit, but for this one we have pumpkin bamboo, we have a little of our plum angelina, some of our onion and saffron wool nips, a little bit of our iris sari silk waist, it's a little fun um, bundle of our sari silk ribbon, and then a little bit of our leaf tessa silk. Oh yes, and the hankies, you can't forget the hankies, that's our bardo hankies right there. Oh, and it also comes with, uh, duh, Hannah, it comes with our MC1. It's going to come with three colors of MC1 in them. This one comes with espresso bean, um, red grapefruit, and true violet in our MC1 colors. So it's a fun little pack. If you're wet felting, it gives you a lot of texture and fun colors to play with. It's great if you're you know, curious about learning some of the new fibers. It's a great little pack to get a little bit of that fiber and play with it for a little while. Linda Reader says, want it. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's all beautiful colors. Oh, pumpkin, love it. <laughs> love this. It's a gorgeous pack. Thank y'all. Thank you, Hannah. <laughs> then we've also got a wonderful pack. This is the Fall Gathering Specialty Designer Pack. So these colors are, uh, this bundle is, is similar to the autumn leaves. It's got a lot more fun goodies. So this is how it looks packaged. As you can see, it's got quite a lot. We've got one open for you. 
<laughs> okay, so we're gonna start here with the <laughs> we're gonna start here with the merino top right here. This is Bordeaux, marigold, prairie, burnt orange, sunshine, and then we've got the silk blends Pueblo and sunflower. We've got the Sari Silk in Bordeaux, Saffron Tessa Silk, this is the Amethyst Bamboo Top, these are the Coco Neps, this right here is the Forest Blaze Angelina, I'll try to move it in the light so you can see how it flashes in the light, it's a gorgeous color. And then right here we've got the Olive Silk Hankies. Lovely, <laughs> lovely, lovely. Sonia says drool. Darlene Jomi mm -hmm. says love that. Uh, Rebecca says the sparkly stuff. So uh, Paula asked what kind of fiber is Angelina? Angelina is a heat bondable nylon, uh, polyester. <laughs> it's a heat bondable polyester. It really only binds to itself, um, so sometimes you do need to anchor it down with, with wool. But it adds such a lovely just sparkle to your projects. Mm -hmm. Connie Wood says, this is gorgeous. Sue, Sis Hewitt says, gorgeous is right. <laughs> <laughs> Devin McCarroll says, I want all of it. <laughs> right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, Anne, so much. <laughs> That's why we made the, the super bundle. So these are available in a big bundle. And what happens if you order the bundle, and this one is called, the one that Ann just showed you is called Fall Gathering. And it's actually discounted uh, from if you bought each of those individual things one at a time. So you'll find these under our specialty designer bundles or specialty designer packs page. And these are called bundles. So we have a few different varieties and they're really fun. And the, just the benefit is you do save if you just get the bundle. It's one click, we grab the bag that we've already made up and it's on its way to you. So these two things really are more designed uh, for wet felting mostly. Um, and it is a fun way, as Hannah said, to experiment with different fibers if you're just getting started or if you just want the ease of having it all collected and put together for you. That's and good. Spring asks, how long are the bundles available? Oh, the bundles are in perpetuity. I mean, as long as they're doing well, we'll offer them. So like we still have a spring, what do we call it? Spring fling or what did we call it? Spring. Spring fling. Spring fling. Like the spring fling is still available. The summer solstice is still available. Uh, I'm forgetting the other, the one that the, I want to call it Zen <laughs> Garden. Zen yeah. Garden still available. So they're all still available. They're not, even though they seem seasonal, they're available all year long. Yep, happy to make those up for you. Cool. Okay, great fall colors. <laughs> Cherie, thank you very much. And then says, when you order the Autumn Leaves package, are the fibers labeled so you can order one again if you really like it? That's a great question, Susan. So. If you order the specialty designer bundle, they are not. The specialty designer bundles have small, that's this one that Hannah showed in this package, and this is how it comes. So this one, really, it's like a designer goodie bag, if you will, of merino tops, luster, and design, topical design fibers. These are not individually labeled, and honestly, we couldn't afford to do that with such these small samples. But when you order the bundles they are they're all labeled the luster fibers are in their individual package um, so you can absolutely hold back a little sample so that reminds me to remind you when you get fibers for the first time whether they're from us or from someone else take back a little pinch sample and save the name the micron of the fiber, the color name, whatever you can. And you might even start making uh, like a little notebook page for each vendor and even noting what your buying experience was like with that vendor. Did you have to wait a long time? Did you get good customer service? You might even put their phone number on that page. That's how I started. When I very first started, I didn't know anything about fiber or any, to me, every lock was just a curly stuff, <laughs> curly locks. Um, I started just making a single page for each vendor and saving things back so I knew what to reorder. Yeah, so it is a great question. We have a couple questions about the bundles. Sure. Rebecca asked, 
what size project would you say that you could do with a specialty designer pack? One a, scarf, two? Yeah, a specialty designer pack, you could definitely do more than a scarf uh, because of the weight. So you could do a scarf and have stuff left back. You could uh, do like a journal cover. You could uh, definitely make a little picture. The specialty designer packs, when we first started making them, as some of you know, are based on the way I like to felt. So I always treated them more as the, the third layer or the design layer for myself. So if I were gonna make a table runner or a vessel or a purse, I might choose my base one, two to three colors and then use something like this as my color palette for doing the top design layer. And once you felt with me a little bit, you'll, you would see, I wanted, I should have taken a picture this weekend when I was felting, this little tiny picture, because I had a six foot table, my picture's only taking up, you know, 18 inches, and the table was just piled with fibers for me to pick from. And that's what we've designed these to be, are like a little color palette that you can choose little bits from. So if you use it like that, it will go even further. But there's definitely enough of each of the merino tops in here for you to do a, a project. Whether you could do wrist warmers, you could make a lightweight hat probably, um, a neck wrap, a little journal cover, something like that. Is that good? Any other questions? Yeah, Laura wants to know how many ounces of fiber come with the bundles? These are, now this one, well here, let me just wait it back. I have enough scale here today because um, we're gonna be doing some weights and stuff. So if you weigh, let me weigh this. This bag right here weighs 17 ounces. Now that's with all of the packaging and everything, but this bag right here weighs 17 ounces. So that's a pretty good, haul and this the specialty designer packs which are just meticulously put together weigh on average around four ounces minimum usually before we put some of the other top dressing in isn't that right Anne? about four it's at least going to be four ounces of fiber in those uh, specialty designer packs yep that's how we set it up and a couple of our felting friends want to know could this pack uh, could the fibers in this pack be needle felted? And do we have any packs like this that specially catered to needle felting? Yeah, we for needle felting we have uh, we've been showing off um, some of our fall uh, I mean our MC1 studio packs. Those usually have six colors in them, and then we have a goodie bag. We don't have something that's just a big cluster for um, needle felting because so many of these are fine fibers. We're putting in Tussa Silk, um, Bamboo, the Angelina. You can needle felt with the Angelina, but um, uh, the Neps you can too, but the Sari Silk Waist would be difficult or the Silk Hankies would be difficult. So, uh, you know, what I found is that it's kind of easy to put together your needle felting supplies but web welding supplies feel like sometimes you don't know what they are. They're a little more mysterious. And so these are meant to be samplers, goodie bags for you to, to pull from. But we don't have something as eclectic for needle felting because there's a lot of those fibers that you don't use in needle felting. But what we do try and offer are lots of little um, goodie bags or bundles. Like you can buy an assortment of locks from us and you can buy a little goodie bag of um, neps from us. Uh, you can buy a goodie bag of MC1 or you can buy a goodie bag of the New Zealand Corydale as well as the studio pack. So we try and compartmentalize them so that you can experience some different things um, to help support exactly what I think you're asking. Okay, anything else? Okay, good. Would these be a good pack for the cobweb scarf project on Friday? I have one to use. Karen, they, they could be. Um, they could be, and you'll understand more once you see how we stretch them out, but for like immediate, easy success, I'm gonna encourage that for the cobweb scarf that you bring a continuous length, length of fiber of at least one color, um, or a uh, merino silk blend. That's what I'm gonna be using is a merino silk blend. And let me see, 
I don't have one. I don't have one here I can pull out. But because of the way we're going to stretch it out and the merino silk blends, let me show you. A merino silk blend is going to give you a lot of variation in color um, and even sheen. Like if I show you just the back of this scarf, all pretty much all of what you're seeing is the merino silk blend. Oh sure. Is pretty much all of what you're seeing in the scarf is the merino silk blend. Now on this side, this is my design side. And this side I've added in other merino tops, I've added in uh, my own yarns and a little bit of sari silk waste. These are the kinds of things, uh, some of these things are included in our cobweb scarf kit and some you're just going to pull from your own stash. But the reason I'm suggesting to use something like the merino silk blends is because they lend themselves to a really rich, complementary uh, scarf with very little effort. So my suggestion is for the first time you do this project is bring one long length of fiber um, because of how we're going to lay it out. And then after that you can apply the same idea with a more eclectic mix of fibers like you're suggesting. Um, okay, so I'm going to try and read your questions. Anne's going to go grab, can we shorten up the scarf without having the webbing effect be ruined. I, I'm trying to process that question. Luann says, can we shorten up the scarf without having the webbing effect be ruined? Do you mean, Luann, can you clarify that question? Do you mean, can you make a shorter scarf than mine in the same style? Um, if you can just rephrase the question so that I can better answer it. And that's for Luann. Um, okay, so this is, uh, this is the wool that I used for the blue scarf I was just holding up for you. This is a merino silk blend. It's called Damson. It's an 80-20, so that means it's 80% merino top and 20% silk. And in this particular blend, the silk is not dyed. It's the white length running through it. And when you spread this out, you can see all of these gorgeous colors. Hopefully this is going to focus all of the gorgeous colors in this. And that's why we like to use these for something like the cobweb scarf. And you'll see if you make it with me, or even if you watch, you'll see why I just go, this is a fast way to make an awesome project. And it's a great learning project too. Okay. And did, I'm looking for, uh, I think it was Luann who asked a question. Uh, Luann said, Luann Mac Johnson asked a question about shortening the scarf. So if she can clarify that, I don't understand uh, what her question was exactly. How long should the length of fiber be? Great question, Karen. So we're suggesting at least an ounce and a half of merino or merino silk blends. It should be longer than you want your scarf to be. We're going to lay these out on a six foot table. So I'm going to show you how to stretch it out and I suggest that it be at least six feet long. What I'm going to do is take that length of fiber that I showed you and stretch it so that it hangs off my six foot table. If you're working on a table that's shorter, I'm going to show you how to work with that also and how to accommodate. Like if your table is only five feet or even four feet long, I'll show you how to accommodate for that length and we'll do it on mine. So this scarf here was made on a six foot table with ends trailing over. This is how I always make them by the way and I'm sure you'll modify the method to fit you. I, this just works for me and I like it. Um, and then I like to put on these long tails because I don't like a scarf. You don't want a scarf to stop here. <laughs> Trust me on that. You don't want your scarf to start right here. So think about the trails, you know, when you make them, even if you don't like, you know, a long fringe, be willing to make it a little bit longer than to just stop right at your breast line because it just is not very flattering for some reason. It's just not. But you can make a neck wrap, you know, that's just not what we're doing on Friday. So okay. I, 
I think what Luann is asking is, is the length important for the webbing look? No. She thinks she doesn't want to make a long scarf. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Luann's saying, can she make a shorter one? Yes, you can make a shorter one, and you can even uh, make like a table runner with this and just make it wider. But if it's going to be wider, then you'll split your fiber and have two widths on the table. But it doesn't have to be super long to have that this webbing effect, for sure. Yeah. Okay. When, will there be a link to the scarf tutorial afterwards? Yes, Spring. So I've actually already recorded video uh, for this scarf. I need to edit it, produce it, and get it on YouTube, which will be after the live felt along. So we'll have a dedicated sort of a shorter version of the tutorial on YouTube, but we will also have the live felt along will be available right here on our Facebook page slash Living Felt, and then um, we'll probably upload that one to YouTube also as long as there were no technical glitches, and that'll go under our live, we have like a live Felt Along playlist there where you can see everything that we've done live, at least recently. Yeah. Okay. Do you have to have a lot of space? Uh, how do you contain water for a long item? I'll be working on my kitchen island. Okay, so these are great questions and then will I have any left over after a two ounce? Yes, okay, so do you need a lot of space? I'm gonna say a four, you want at least a four foot length of space probably so that you can get some layout going and if your width of your working space is about 20 inches or more, you're gonna be in great shape. How do you contain water? We're not gonna use a whole bunch of water. So if you want a layout before we get started, here's what I suggest. Cover your work surface with towels. Whatever's the full length, whether that's four feet or six feet, put down two towels. Towels are gonna help you gather water. Secondly, lay down either super bubble or bubble wrap the same length as your work surface. Ideally, um, it's gonna need to be as long as your scarf will be. So you will need that bubble wrap. Ultimately, like if your work surface is four feet, but you're gonna lay out six and a half feet for your scarf, you need that much bubble wrap. The same thing with the barrier layer. The barrier layer can be, the barrier between your hands and the fiber can either be mesh, like our wet felting mesh, or like one mil plastic. Okay, so that one mil plastic, you can even have two layers if you're more comfortable. If you have bubble wrap, just have one layer on top. If you have the uh, super bubble, you might like to sandwich it in two layers. And you'll see why as I spin it around. I think today, uh, for this time, I'm gonna work with um, the plastic instead of the mesh, especially since this is such a beginner project. And that'll, um, I think it'll just be a little bit easier for you to work with and I'm still deciding whether I'm gonna use my super bubble or bubble wrap. It doesn't really matter in this case. You'll want a pool noodle also. So now, if you're worried about water dripping on your floor, just bring a bowl or a little pan, you know, like a plastic pan or a bucket, so that when it does start to drip, you get it on there and then your backup towels, which I think my friend Elsa will be like, towels, towels, towels. <laughs> I think it's it Elsa who said she always has a bunch of towels, or it could have been Kate, I don't know. <laughs> but always have extra towels if you're worried about the water hitting the floor. We will not use so much water that you have a waterfall, I promise. So um, that's how you're going to set out. Towels, super bubble or bubble wrap, mesh or plastic barrier. And if you really want to just make it easy on yourself, then just get that one mil uh, painter's plastic uh, like you can get at the hardware store. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? No. Okay. Hi from my cruise ship. Hi, Debbie. Where are you, Debbie? We want a porthole picture, Debbie. If you're on a cruise ship, we want to see where you are. And that's so awesome that you have internet out there. Didn't even really occur to me. Uh, someone's hus husband is going to get her a six foot table. That's awesome, <laughs> Sharon. And Karen says it works on her island. She keeps an old towel for sure. Um, hi, Kimberly. 
Uh, Kate says she puts out plastic tablecloths or a shower curtain liner on her table under the towels to protect the wood. <laughs> yeah, whatever you gotta do. Our tables here at the shop can get wet. At home, I have the same table that we use here in the studio, or I use a six foot plastic table, which is what I'll be working on. And I promise I won't overwater us. So we'll keep it contained. And I'm so glad so many of you are gonna be joining us. So just so I know, can I just see a little stream of hearts if you're gonna tune in Friday at, at 12.30 and be live with us? I'm gonna grab a drink. Oh, and Debbie says she's in Seattle heading on an Alaska cruise. <gasps> wow, Debbie, I hope you'll send us a picture. I, I think about would I ever go on a cruise and I think Alaska might be a really great destination. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jill says, so happy to have found you guys. We're glad you found us too, Jill. So, well, I'm watching the stream of hearts come in. I'm so glad you'll all be joining us. We wanted to take a minute today, and our goal is to answer a really common question that we get, and that is, how much wool do I need for blank? We get emails and phone calls and communications through our CRM and sometimes a Facebook message. How much wool do I need for this? And it might be, here's a scarf that somebody else made, or here's a vessel, or here's a cat cave, or to make a pair of slippers, or uh, a table runner. We've had people call who have never felt it before and say, how much wool do I need for a wall hanging that's gonna be 42 inches wide by 24, or, our favorite, I think, was uh, one of our friends called and said, how much wool do I need for, uh, it was something like, a it was a community art project where over 200 kids were gonna be felting fish. Were they wet felting fish, Anne? We get needle, needle felting fish. And so we get these questions all the time. How much wool do I need for? And so our goal today is to show you a few different items to tell you their weights, and then to give you some guidance on estimating your own weights, whether you're making something for yourself, you're trying to make production things for the holidays, you're planning to put on a class, which very often happens, a teacher's gonna call and say, we wanna felt this thing, and how much do we need for 30 kids or 40 kids or 50 kids? So some of you already know what is gonna be contained in these answers. But I want to uh, give you some parameters to think about around your projects and show you some things that you know are a little tangible and you can put your eyes on. So how does that sound? Good, and give me the thumbs up. And this is for those of you who are watching back, we're posting this on the website, uh, hopefully if it turns out well. Uh, so this is live and we're gonna get some interaction from our friends and I hope y'all will ask a question during this section uh, so we can be of help. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is uh, this little piece of fiber, this fiber that I'm holding up, and actually this fiber that I'm holding up. These are each two ounce uh, bundles of fiber. Uh, these are both merino top. This is what two ounce looks like. And it, it's going to be really long when you get it. So um, just something to think about as we're gonna look at a few projects here. This is what two ounces of merino top looks like. And now I'm gonna fold it in fourths. So now it's folded in fours. Two ounces goes a really long way. And uh, these are two ounce bundles of our MC1 right up here. They look like a, like a fat soup can. That's what two ounces of MC1 looks like. You could do a lot of things with two ounces of fiber. All of these scars right here ultimately weigh two ounces. So this blue one that I was just wearing weighs two ounces. Uh, this mango one weighs two ounces. You can get a nice lightweight drapey scarf with the tails and this has yarns and locks and stuff in it at about two ounces. Much more than that or felted more densely than that and it's probably going to be a little too stiff for your scarf. So you might want to think when you're thinking about your projects Think about the drape as well as the thickness, as well as the size. Drape is really important when you think of wearables or stiffness when you think of a hat. So these hats are each two ounces. They're gonna be two, 2.1, 2.2 uh, ounces. These are two ounce wet felted samples. So these are made over a large resist 
and calculating shrinkage when you're wet felting is a thing you know that you learn how to do we have a calculator for that but you know make your first thing and notice how much it shrinks but these are examples of two ounce wet felting projects so let me show you a couple more and Anne will let me know if any questions come up so this beautiful piece is made by our friend Kimberly Pulley this weighs like it's either 2.1 or 2.2 and it has inclusions in it there's this is uh, some kind of uh, velvet fabric in here uh, you see these little nobules there's some inclusions I don't know if they're pebbles or beads or what they're very lightweight but this whole piece weighs about 2.1 or 2.2 ounces and then um, my piece that I shared this one is going away this week um, that I shared this week on Facebook this weighs the same as Kimberly's so they're very lightweight if I just do this you can see it's like a very lightweight piece it doesn't have a lot of density to it it's not very thick um, but it's it's just a very lightweight thin piece with you know most of the bulk being concentrated right about here in the design so two ounces of fiber goes a long long way and this has inclusions in it also which I know a number of you have asked for a felt along for that and so I'm trying to schedule it all <laughs> trying to schedule those things out but I wanted to show you some of those um, examples for two ounce wet felting projects and I have a little scale here with me so that I can weigh a, a few more things this little uh, neck warmer I got from Sonia Oswalt um, you've probably seen it before this weighs like 1.3 I'll just wait again I already forgot the weight <laughs> this little neck warmer weighs like 1.3 it's kind of dense it's a little bit thicker you know than the scarves are and rightfully so if you want to wear something like uh, that like around your neck you want it to be cozy and hug in so um, I'm gonna watch for questions as they come up these little pumpkins were like one ounce samples and this is available in our free tutorial for wet felting a fairy tale pumpkin these are the simple pumpkins that we made and not counting the stems just the fiber I don't even know if it was an ounce which is about how much we used on our Christmas trees last year so this is just a little a little tiny bit of fiber the bigger pumpkins weigh can weigh between three you know between two to four ounces depending on how many loaves how complex they are how thick you make it you know how heavy your hand is these can weigh anywhere from two to four these I think we're pushing more towards over three when I first made them for sure all right and Shin wants to know what is the background on your your heart piece oh okay so going back to the heart piece this here is the merino short fiber bat the background is the merino short fiber bat in slate that's the color right now it's slate so that's that gray mm -hmm. merino short fiber bat and then going back to the hats when you said that there were uh, two ounces of wool is that two ounces total or two ounces of wool plus the embellishments in the uh, it's two so they weigh two ounces total so here i'll weigh my pixie hat this pixie hat is 2.3, but a lot of this that you see in here, these are silk fabrics. So this weighs 2.3 with the silk fabrics. And this one, let me weigh it just while we're here live. This one weighs 2.2. This one has a tiny bit of silk fabric in it. It has less than the other, but there's one piece. And there's one piece. And then, you know, just a little bit of naps and stuff. But comparatively, it's less. Mm -hmm. And then Kelly asks, approximately how much fiber would you use, how much fiber would you need for a pair of adult slippers? It really depends on the shoe size. So who is that, Kelly? Okay, I keep dropping my <laughs> There we go. 
Okay, Kelly asks, how much fiber do you need for adult slippers? We recommend between six and eight, depending on the size and also depending on the thickness. So it's a great question that you brought up because thickness is really important, especially when you're felting something like that. So you want to, you want to probably make a sample first um, and get an idea of what that thickness is like. And you also need to measure the shrinkage of the fiber that you're using. Are you using merino top and it's gonna to tend towards 30, 40, 50% shrinkage or using something like our MC1 batting that's gonna be, you could get 20 to 25% shrinkage. You might get more if you really push it or are you using something that shrinks less. So calculate the shrinkage of that fiber so you know how much to put down and think about the thickness. On slippers, you usually want to pad the bottoms. If you make the tops and the bottoms the same thickness, they tend to feel thin on the bottom. Um, so you're going to want to put at least one to two extra layers on what would be the foot pad and think about, you know, what's the thickness going to be? You know, do you want it thicker than this? You don't want it so thin that it does this. So you're gonna to wanna to play with that a little bit and calculate how much fiber you need to put down on what you have. And for slippers, I'll tell you that based on personal experience, it's worth putting more fiber into the slipper. You're gonna be cutting out holes. So it's worth putting more in there and it's worth having the padding in there. They feel so much better when they're a little bit thicker than if they're too thin. They just do. A couple of our felting friends love the design of the hats. Is there a how did you make the pattern? Oh, um, the, okay. So this hat, I sort of followed. There was a free article in Felt Magazine, wasn't it last year? I think it was. I I, I want to figure. Uh, I would have to look that up, but I think we shared it. And I basically kind of followed that little. Uh, template so it's a pointy it's a pointy template and I I can't remember whether I followed her measurements or made up my own but it was just a pointy template and you get hat you know hat templates abound but it was from felt magazine and they do have a digital version it was like five or six five or six dollars I think now this one I made up myself and I can uh, bring these in another time and that one that you're holding right now is called your September hat. Right? This is September. Yeah, this is my September hat. And I have another hat uh, that is really thick. I made it the same size, basically the same size, but double the fiber. And I thought it was here, but it's at home. Uh, so it's closer to four ounces. And so if you want a hat that's really thick and really stiff and really warm, put more fiber. But the thing to know is that the more fiber you put down, the less shrinkage you're going to get. Hey everybody, one last tip I wanted to offer you, especially when you're just starting to work with wet felting, maybe something new for you, one of the best things you can do is before you start working with your fiber on a project is to divide it so you know how much fiber you have. You might be trying to lay out a wall hanging that you want to make four layers deep or maybe you're making a pair of slippers and you want to use an equal amount on each slipper. Maybe you're laying out a hat or a purse and you want to know how much fiber you're laying out on each side. Usually when you buy fiber you know how much you got in a bundle. This is a two ounce bundle. When I work with it now, I like to work with it thinner than I even ever did before. So in a past tutorial, uh, whether that's written or online, I may have worked with the fiber in the full thickness, but this is what I would do now. I would take this full two ounces and divide it in half. And then I know I have a one ounce roll of each. With each of my one ounce rolls, I'm gonna divide them in half. This is just how I work. Some people will drape it over their wrist. I tend to always wear my watch or wear a ring and it gets caught on my stuff. But now I know I have a half ounce. These are each half ounce lengths. I'm gonna take each half ounce, divide it in half the long way, and then I'm actually going to very often divide it in half again. So, You'll make little, some people call them little nests or little buns. And I know that this is a quarter ounce of fiber. And if you divide your wool into small little increments and set them aside for each portion of the project that you're working on, then you can measure 
and pace your usage. So rather than just come to the end and realize you've used more than half of your fiber, you can really start to pace yourself and learn to control your layout and work in nice little thin, thin amounts that you're controlling. So control the width, control the amount you lay out, and that'll help you also control how much you put down in each layer. So that's my hot tip. Divide your wool and set it aside to work with those particular parts of the project. And I hope that helps out. So I want to jump a little bit to needle felting projects too because that's the other place where we get asked about weights a lot. And so I brought in a little, uh, a little collection of pumpkins. If you're needle felting and you're trying to estimate how much fiber do you need for a project, whether it's a group project, uh, you're, like I said, you're teaching a class or you're trying to have a little party um, or you're making a bunch for yourself, Think about, oh my leaves fell down. <laughs> I see the uh, Think about the characteristics of the, the fiber that you're making. So here's an example of two pumpkins. They're sort of similar in size, but I would like to see maybe a few guesses. How much do you think this pumpkin weighs? And then how much do you think this pumpkin weighs? They're pretty close, they're not too far off. Does this one weigh twice as much as this one? Is it a third more, a quarter more? So pumpkin A, how much does it weigh? And pumpkin B, how much does it weigh? Have you seen anything come in? Can you look on the phone? Kimberly Blake says, uh, the first one weighs a half ounce. Devin says quarter ounce. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for a few more people. Half ounce, oh I see. Karen says half ounce, quarter ounce. Um, so first three, <laughs> Arlene says three. So here's the first thing I want to show you that besides a little bit of size difference that's different between these two pumpkins is this right here. So here I am, Marie's going to do the tennis ball squeeze. I'm doing the tennis ball squeeze on this pumpkin and it's pretty much like holding its shape, right? And you can see like my muscles flexing in my arm. I'm really squeezing this pumpkin and this little guy I can just squishy him away. If I do the tennis ball squeeze, he's like gone. So the difference between these two pumpkins besides how they appear to be in size is the firmness. So the big one weighs one ounce exactly, like on the nose. There's no wire in the stem, I don't think, or anything like that. Uh, that weighs one ounce on the nose. And the little one weighs a half ounce. So the little one is not very dense at all. This one weighs a half ounce. I think one, this one weighs a half ounce. Yeah, this one, this is a good, like, this one weighs a half ounce, 0.5, and this one weighs 0 0.4. 0 0.4 and 0.5, because this thing is like, rock hard. I don't remember who made this one. It was a, a customer made this one and sent it to us. This thing is so firm. So the overall size is one thing, but how firmly you needle felt is the next. So a great thing to do is to you know, make your pumpkins or owls or sculptures, however you're going to make them, and then get a little kitchen scale and weigh them and see how much they weigh. That's going to give you a better idea of how much fiber to use. This little uh, bunny is another thing made by my friend Sonia. And um, she says, I needle felt rock hard. And I'll say, he's pretty firm. He's not as hard as Little Pumpkin. <laughs> Honestly, this thing, <laughs> Connie, I don't know if it passed Connie's test. Connie says she needle felt so hard that it'll bounce. But this little bunny with his staff that has wire in it and his little coat and his little glass eyes, he weighs 1.4 ounces. Mm -hmm. 1.4 so he is this pumpkin plus the other pumpkin whatever <laughs> this pumpkin plus the plus the other pumpkin um, so you want to think about the size yes but also about the density of your own project that's a big factor do we have some other questions around that around the density no mm, no okay so I want to show you let's see this we get asked about this maybe once a year 
maybe once a year. This I used on our early, early videos, and this I called my, um, this was called my needle caddy, and I used to store all my felting needles in here. This thing is made back in the day when all I had was New Zealand Corydale, and I needle felted it and wet felted it. It was the only fiber I used to have. So this piece was needle, was wet felted 100% over a tennis ball. So a tennis ball would fit right there. I bet I could stuff this pumpkin in there. <laughs> a tennis ball wrapped in saran wrap, uh, and then I wrapped fiber around it and wet felted it. It took a long time and it took a lot of effort and I swore I would never do it again. Uh, I made one after, one after it, because uh, I wanted to make them like little ring bowls. That's what I was making them for. Um, and cutting it was very hard. But this thing weighs three and a half ounces. So it took seven ounces of fiber to get it this thick and cover that tennis ball. And it was a lot of effort to wet felt for sure. So um, I just wanted to share those things to give you an idea about your own weights and then to encourage you to make sample and test pieces. So before I jump over, I wanna show you um, these two little guys, if you're just starting or if you have someone who's just starting a needle felting or you just want a fun little fall project, we have these little needle felting of scarecrow heads. This is a little video and it doesn't have its own dedicated page, but it's a really fun way to practice needle felting balls, needle felting basic shapes, uh, doing fine lines, blending fibers maybe a little bit, uh, covering another shape, and it would be a great project to do with a girlfriend or the grandkids or something like that, or maybe even for you know your little crafty shows, you might make them into a pin or something. So this is the little scarecrows. Make little tests and weigh how so you know how much fiber you need. And keep in mind that, you know, sometimes colors shift from lot to lot. So whenever possible, um, you want to buy as much fiber as you need for a project. And when you're wet felting, make small test samples. You want to make a small test sample with the same fiber, the same number of layers, the same fabrics, and the same design elements that you're going to use on your final piece, whether it's a table runner, a book cover, or a huge wall hanging make a test piece that's the same thickness and has all of the same elements. It doesn't have to be a mini version, it could be a slice of whatever that big piece is. And then weigh it. And especially when you're doing wall hangings, leave room, um, leave enough of a perimeter to account for odd shrinkage when you have different elements going in because different design elements different types of fiber will shrink differently. So I encourage you, unless you want the organic borders, and some people do, to give yourself a little more room to work. Uh, like this, I would like to see this either mounted on a bright white background or wrapped around you know, a thin canvas. Some, sometimes I like to do that. So just think about leaving yourself a little bit of a room around the perimeter of the design because depending on how you lay out the fibers, what types of fibers they are, and what types of design elements, the shrinkage can be different. Okay, are there any comments that we should uh, re-echo or any questions? People are saying, I need a scale. What's the back look like of what? How did you manage to get such a perfect heart shape with all those different fibers if they shrink differently? That, Rebecca, is what I'll share <laughs> when we do a felt along. This was a new experiment for me, so I made it up and it was just a therapeutic felting project <laughs> for my weekend. It was something I just did for myself and hey, it worked. <laughs> so I will share, I'm gonna do a little more experimenting with that. Uh, like I said, some people have asked for felt along, so we will plan a tutorial uh, time and day for doing, the, some people are just interested in the beachy oceanscape, but at the same time, I'll show you how I controlled that shape and I just want to play with some other ideas as well because it's just a single concept that you can apply in a lot of different ways, I think. Um, Linda specifies the heart picture. The heart picture? She, oh, the back? the back? What's the back look like? Oh, that's even a cool design on the back. You can see a little texture. 
Uh, you can see a little texture, but there isn't much coming through. I mean, the back, this is 100% wet felted, so it's not, we weren't poking any fibers from the front to the back. It's just 100% wet felted. Mm -hmm. So most of the fibers. Uh, I like that the leaves stick on the leaves. Oh, Deborah, thank you, Deborah. Deborah says she likes the leaves on a stick. So this is what we did with our free uh, autumn leaves tutorial. We have a free tutorial for wet felting autumn leaves. It's a free PDF download. These are made from our Fall Fun MC1 Studio Pack. And this is what we did together last week. We wet felted autumn leaves. And I might go back and extra finish that video because we didn't get done all the way. But uh, yeah, this is what we made here in the shop. It's just a little um, a fun wall hanging. And I think it would be great to make giant ones too. Hard to carve out the time for all the things we want to felt. <laughs> cool. Um, someone says, I would love to know how to control the shape. Can you show that? It's like a relief painting. Mm. Cool. Yes, I will share that. When we get to that felt along, I promise I will share uh, how I did that. We have a few things coming up. So we have the cobweb felt along on Friday. Week after that, Joyce Hazelrig is going to be here. We're going to be needle felting dragons. That's going to be an amazing two days, jam packed with a lot of work to happen in a short amount of time. Uh, needle felting owls is something a lot of people have asked for and these are simple fantasy playful owls so I'll share those uh, next week and then we want to wet felt the fairy tale pumpkin so I know a lot of people want to learn how to do this last year we wet felted the simple pumpkins together and then a lot of people endeavor to do this on their own you absolutely can do it on your own especially if you already have your toe in the water but if you want to wet felt these with me, the basic supplies, I'm going to suggest this year, ideally if you use the Merino short fiber bats, it's going to be a lot easier. Um, otherwise use our fine Merino top, the 19.5 micron Merino top. That's what this one is. This one is the short fiber, I mean this one is the Merino top. And the purple ones I did this year, I did with the short fiber bats because it makes the layout go so much faster. So we will wet felt these together and then we can look also at doing the ocean. So that's a lot of things to do uh, right here in the fall and Christmas will be right around the corner. I'm just calendaring those and I'll let you know as soon as we have them on the calendar when we're gonna do them all. Cool, okay, any final things, Anne? Well, I think we've gotta give away some prizes unless you have anything we need to do. Um, Lori says, when are the cobwebs, the cobweb scarves this Friday September 7th, 12.30, right here at facebook.com slash livingfelt. That's when we're wet felting the cobweb scarves. Cool? Okay, gals, so here's what we're gonna do. We are going to give away some presents. Thank you to everyone who has been here and joined us for today. We appreciate your feedback. We appreciate your questions. We appreciate all that you're bringing forward is good for all of us to grow and expand. Um, we were talking about weights. I forgot I brought Mr. and Mrs. Claus with us. I just wanted to tell you that these two weigh like exactly the same, which was funny for me. They do have armature and their total weight is six ounces and 6.2 ounces because she has maybe more clothing. Um, so just a couple of more things to think about. And if you're doing something like wrist warmers, our wrist warmer pack comes with three ounces of the primary fiber it doesn't even take a lot and you're going to make a nice thick project so the fairies are here come on in gals we're going to give away some presents <laughs> okay so everyone who's contributed to the conversation today your name goes into Anne's magic little bowl and we're going to give away some presents uh take it away Anne. <laughs> sure I got all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Tina Waltke. Waltke. Tina Waltke. Yay! Yeah, Tina. <laughs> Tina, you win a 12 by 12 foam. And your choice of two colors of our MC1 batting. Oh, super fun. So good for a good needle felting day. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. Let me take those. That'd be awesome. Okay. <laughs> Go next, and then I'll go last. Okay. Konami Takeda. <laughs> Yay, Konami! Congratulations! 
Alrighty, you won your choice of a two ounce roll of our merino top, the fall assortment of our Nets goodie bag, a Tessa silk of your choice, and a wow. silk hanky of your wow. choice. Wow, <laughs> super fun. <laughs> Congratulations. So just email customer service, both of you, your color choices. You can email customer service at livingfelt.com or you can give us a call at 877-665-5790. Tell us what colors you want, and we have one more prize to give away. And we got Cheryl Hibble. Yay, Cheryl! Cheryl, you won an Autumn Leaves Specialty Designer Pack. Super fun, that's one of my favorites. That's awesome. Thank you everybody for participating with us today. We wish you a great, great rest of your week. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. We appreciate you. If you enjoyed this video, if you would like more wet felting and needle felting tutorials, hit the subscribe button so you'll get notified every time we put up a new video. And join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash livingfelt. We go live almost every week. We call it Wooly Wednesdays. It's Wednesday at 2 p.m. Central, and we answer your wooly questions in our wooly wonderland. We do live demos and tutorials there as well. And hey, you can even win fun prizes. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.